additional triangle, we only need to add two sticks after the first three sticks. We can say that the number of sticks, let's call the number S, is equal to three previous sticks plus the quantity of second sequence minus one times the common difference of two. We then get three plus two equal five. Try that for the fourth figure. For the fourth figure, we can say that S is equal to 3 plus 4 minus 1 multiplied by 2 is equal to 9. We can now predict the number of sticks needed to make the tenth figure. S is equal to 3 plus 10 minus 1 times 2 is equal to 3 plus 18 is equal to 21. What about for the 100th figure? The 100th figure is S equal to 3 plus 100 minus 1 multiplied by 2 is equal to 3 plus 198 is equal to 201. We'll need 201 sticks to make the 100th figure. S is equal to 3 plus N minus 1 times 2 can still be simplified. We can say this formula is also equal to S is equal to 3 plus 2N minus 2 or S is equal to 1 plus 2N. Here, Tim, why don't you try this one? Okay. After the four sticks, we need to add three more sticks. So, 1, 2, and 3. We can say that the number of sticks S is equal to 4 plus n minus 1 multiplied by 3. And to simplify, s is equal to 4 plus 3n minus 3 or 1 plus 3n. You're getting the hang of it! But something's bothering me though. What if the world does not have shells and sticks from which to base these patterns? How can we then find mathematical equations? Tim, I don't think that's a problem for mathematicians. But I think that's a problem for artists like me. Thank goodness. Show me how. Easy for you to say. What's happening to you? You know, I can't imagine a world without the beauty of shells. Cut that out. I can't. It affects me so much. Please, will you? Stop it! Here, this is for you, Miss Gemma. This is my favorite shell. I'm giving it to you because you taught me how to love math. And that will also be yours, just in case the ocean runs out of shell. That's sweet of you, Tim. I'm glad you didn't pulverize this one. Actually, when I saw that particular shell, I thought maybe if there's a shell worth admiring, maybe there's at least one math teacher worth respecting. And I thought maybe that particular math teacher is you. Thanks, Tim. I'm so flattered. But you know, before we move on to the next method, it's best for us to practice again. That's the only way to perfect math. Here, we need to add four shells after the first shell. We can say that the number of shells S is equal to 1 plus N minus 1 multiplied by 4. To simplify, S is equal to 1 plus 4N minus 4 or 4N minus 3. Try this one. Here, we need to add three more sticks after the first three sticks. 
we can say that the number of sticks S is equal to 3N. Very good! I think you're ready to learn the direct method of the equation. You won't need the shells and sticks anymore. It involves getting the differences between consecutive numbers. What do you mean? Let's take a look at the sequences of numbers of the five samples we solved earlier. Let's call their corresponding equations A, B, C, D, E. The equations in example A to E could have been derived on the basis of the constant differences by extending these to the 0f figure. The 0f figure of example A is minus 2 using a constant difference of 3. Thus, we have S is equal to 3n minus 2. The 0th figure of D is 1 using a constant difference of 2. So S is equal to 2n plus 1. The 0th figure of C is 1 using a constant difference of 3. So S is equal to 3n plus 1. The 0th figure of D is negative 3 using a constant difference of 4. So S is equal to 4n minus 3. The 0th figure of E is 0 using a constant difference of 3. So S is equal to 3n.